Hey, welcome back to Evil's Comics. I am Evil Mike, and I have another review for you. This is going to be The Closet from James Tynion IV, or James Tynion, or uh, however you want to pronounce it, Tiny Onion, you know. Um, get into the who's, why's, what's, where's. It's written by James Tynion IV. We got art by Gavin uh, Fullerton, colors by Chris O'Halloran, and letters by Tom Nap Napolino. Um, I know I mispronounced that last one, but if the other ones mispronounced, I'm sorry, bad with names. Um, I always try to do my best. You know, names are important. Um, speaking of names, I am a big James Tinian the fan, the the fourth fan. Um, not per se, just you know, out of the box. He just happened to be writing a lot of stuff that I was reading. Um, he did get me into the whole indie craze with the something is killing the children. I've read that pretty much since it started. You know, I've also read House of Slaughter. I've read Wind. I've read, you know, all his Batman stuff. Um, so why not try one of his stuff that was, you know, <clears throat> one of his side indie projects, right? And it was something that was, I forget the, it was something that was from his Substack that, that Image actually, I think, bought from him or something like that, as the story goes. Don't quote me. But I know it's from Substack, but I don't know how that works, how it got made into a comic, because as far as I know, it was like a members thing only, you pay for the subscription, you get to read the comic, and we didn't because we didn't pay for the subscription. But now, they have the comic called The Closet. Um, honestly, it's, it's okay. Um, I want to say it's okay, but I have high hopes for it, it might get better. But there's not a lot in the first book. Um, we start out with this guy drinking at a bar. We don't even find out his name until later on in the book, um, which I'm drawing a blank at right now. Um, there's only really four main characters in this whole book. Well, five, real technically, but let's go with four people. Um, but in the closet, it starts out with this guy drinking at a bar, and basically, he just stops at a bar just to waste time, uh, like an excuse to go drink. He's on an errand from his wife. Um, and he's supposed to be getting like like tape because they're about to move and they show like the bag of tape right there um, But he's supposed to be getting like as much tape as he can and he already bought like all the tape and and, and like supposedly like it, Like he's supposed to be going to all these shops So since he bought all the tape in the beginning, it's giving him extra time to drink But he kind of doesn't want to go home for a little reason and it's because of his kid um, His kid's name is Jamie but Jamie is having a natural, like, fear of the monster in the closet, you know, scenario. Um, his kid is a little toddler, and basically he's telling the bartender, yeah, you know, I got this wife, we're moving, you know, I love her and everything, I love my kid, but my kid, you know, it's just a stressful time because every night it's like my kid can't sleep because this monster in the closet. The bartender actually tells him, like, an interesting antidote about unicorn's piss. Yes, unicorn's piss about how like if you grab like a Windex bottle, fill it with like some Gatorade and, or some food coloring mix of water, you know, spray it under the bed or something and tell the kid that, that, you know, technically the monster won't come back to this room because they're scared of unicorn piss, you know, something like that. Uh, all along, it's all made up, you know, water in a bottle or whatever, but I mean, monsters are make-believe, you know, to begin with kind of thing. So the story, after the guy gets the good antidote, he's like, yeah, I'm going to try that, you know, I'm on my way home, you know. So, the story does jump over to the guy's, I guess, house. Uh, it kind of looks like an apartment, but let's just say house. Um, and it starts out with the kid trying to sleep, and we get to see the infamous closet. Um, it does look exactly like the, you know, <laughs> closet on the cover. We then hear, like... You know, uh, Jesus Tom, which is the guy's name, and um, basically, you know, she has realized that, that he did go out drinking even though he has the tape, and she's kind of mad. At the same time, his kid Jamie wakes up and comes out and is happy to see Dad and everything, and kind of explains, hey, I can't sleep because the monster in the closet, you know, and Dad, again, is like, oh, with this stuff again. So he does try and do the whole, you know, unicorn piss thing that the bartender just told him about. You know, it sounded good when he had heard about it, and we do see him filling up like a glass of water, because come to find out, everything's already packed, so they don't really have an empty, you know, spray bottle or cleaning bottles just laying around. So he does grab like a glass of water, and he fills it up, but the problem is the kid sees him doing that. 
he turns around and he's like, hey, I got this unicorn piss, and he tries telling the story, and the kid's just smarter than the average bear. So the kid's like, yeah, I saw you fill it up, Dad. It's not, and, you know, the dad still tries and goes on with the story and stuff. And come to find out, they're moving the next day. So the dad eventually is like, you know, had enough with the charades, and he's like, look, son. He was like, well, all we got to do is one more night. You've been brave enough. You've been sticking in, there, in here with this monster in the closet thing for, you know, your whole life or whatever. And he was like, we got one more night. And he was like, we're moving tomorrow. He was like, if you can make it out one more night. And the kid's like, oh, okay, you know. And so dad walks out. Of course, mom is still mad and stuff. And she comes out and she's kind of extra mad now because during the conversation, he kind of made it seem like the kid couldn't come sleep with them in their bed because of, you know, mom. And, and when he walks out, she's like, what the hell, man? I don't, I, you know, he could have came and slept with them. I didn't care. Um, and they do jump back over to the child, you know, Jamie in his room and now the closet is opening and and we we actually see like the, because the dad left the light on thinking that would be enough and we do see like a discoloration in the light in the closet like something has appeared and sure enough we see right here a little friend you know that there, there is something in the closet we do get some detail i won't say you know it's a lot of detail um it's one of my problems with the book because at this point most of the book is all just pictures and panels you know um, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's a very quick read because of this. Um, but basically, the monster does come out. He's clicking his teeth as he comes out. He does hop up on the bed. It might be really hard to see because he is completely black with a little bit of, like, gray, you know, for his shading. But basically, they show him disappear in the room. Like, he climbs up on the bed. He kind of, like, clickety-clacks, you know, and the kid's ear to scare him or whatever. And then he gets off the bed, kind of walks over to, like, some shadows in the room and disappears and the next thing they show is probably one of my biggest beefs with the book but we'll get there um, but they just show this like door and the guy going through the door um, after that we do see that the our, our friendly new guy like turns around and then it causes the kid to scream the parents run into the room you know tells him okay Jamie come sleep in, you know in bed with us we only got one more night screw it and that is the end of the book. They just end of the book. They they end the book with like just a shadow in the room or whatever. But <clears throat> they do show like a picture of uh, what seems to be their new house and that door they just showed. Um, but that is where the the first book uh, leaves off. Like I said, it's not a bad read and everything. It's a it's it's a it's a good read um, as far as it being gripping and you know the cliffhanger and everything. I wouldn't say that's there. Um, honestly, I'm pushing on with issue two just because I have faith in the writer. But as far as like, if I just were to pick this up and like that's what I got, I, I wouldn't continue on with, with the second issue. For me, there wasn't enough in it. My beef with that door thing that I, I mean, come on, it's so I mean, it, what happened there? It, is that like a door that opened up? You know, and I understand that the story might reveal itself later on. We'll find out what that door is or whatever. But give us a little something, you know. Um, like, but in my opinion, it just looks like that, you know, the dad thinks that this alien or monster is going to stay in this house, and and, it, and the book is kind of showing us at the end that the monster is going to follow him or whatever. It's not just stuck in that house or whatever. Um, but like I said, it's not a bad read. The, the art is really good. Um, as far as everything before that, it does tell a pretty easy story. Um, my little beef is like, well, what's going on at the end? What happened? He walked into the shadows, and the next thing we see, there's a door that opens up above the bed, and he wasn't even in that area of the room. So it, to me, it's just a little confusing on what happened there. But that is my review on the closet. Um, I am going to press on for issue two. I'm hoping we get a horrific, you know, horrifying tale. Um, I have yet to re really read a really scary tale, so I've, I'm always on the search for it. I am a huge horror fan. But um, that's my review. Please like, comment, subscribe, you know, all that good stuff. Um, you know, leave me comments below. Did you read it? What would you think? You know, if you passed it up, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, after my review, what would you think? You know, are, are you on board? You know, maybe you're going to pass by it. You know, I don't know. Um, but I hope you all have a great day. I might have some more review comings um, in the future, maybe tonight. It just depends on, you know, who's all in the house with me. But I do thank everybody for watching, for spending time with me. Um, I hope everybody has a wonderful day, and I will see you all soon. Bye. <laughs>